So I wanted to make one last video about the Newman motors and talk to the guys that have already been experimenting with these types of ideas. Now a lot of you guys like myself became intrigued by Joseph Newman because he was getting a lot of media attention quite a few years ago. In fact he was even on the Johnny Carson show. And he had so many engineers backing him up it was hard not to think that he had to be on something. Otherwise how would he get so much professional support? Well that was kind of my thinking at the time and uh, I, I finally, uh, when I first heard about him, I didn't have a copy of his book, but I, I finally did acquire one. And I remember reading all the different principles that he talked about in his book and how it was he uh, came to the conclusion that his motor was putting out more energy than what went in. And anyway, I, I know that a lot of guys that try to replicate what he was doing wanted to do it on a smaller scale. And that in itself really violates the whole principle behind Joe's motor, because if you remember, Joe talked an awful lot about how in his motor he had a great big <clears throat> coil. In fact, one of his motors, if I'm not mistaken, it had an 8,000 pound coil and it had 650 pounds of magnets inside of it. And so most of the guys you find on YouTube that are experimenting with his ideas are not building anything near the scale that Joe did. Now, as far as I'm aware of, this is probably one of the bigger ones that you'll find out there. This is uh, 62 pounds worth of wire that I wrapped around here. And I've got, uh, oh, quite a few magnets on there. I've got 40 uh, N52 rare earth magnets. And if you've studied Joe's ideas, you know that what my thinking was at the time was that if I had more of a magnetic field and more magnets, that I'd get uh, more torque out of it. Of course, we know that Joe had a special commutator on his motor as well. He had a segmented commutator on one of his motors. And if I'm not mistaken, at one point, uh, somebody, it would, maybe it was a PR man, or somebody told me that Joe concluded he didn't have to have a special commentator uh, with the later models that he was developing. Anyway, whatever the case, he had a segmented commutator and a double-sided commutator so that every 180 degrees of rotation it would switch polarity to keep the forward momentum going on the motor. And uh, I didn't do that with this motor here. It was mainly to uh, replicate what I had done years ago right where I saw there seemed to be some built-in governing effects with motors. That was the counter electromotive motor force that I talked about where you might have a motor for example like this one where you've got tremendous torque. I've got about six, <clears throat> six volts going into this motor and we can see tremendous amount of torque here but nevertheless the motor spins very slow and that's from the counter electromotive force that's preventing the motor from speeding it or turning at the speed you would expect it to. With as much torque as you have here, <clears throat> you'd expect this thing to turn real fast, the shaft that is. Anyway, now on this one here, I've got, uh, oh, it looks like I'm drawing uh, probably about 150 milliamps or so at 24 volts. And the amount of power coming out of here, it's not that impressive. I can actually squeeze this nut here on the end of the shaft. It doesn't take much to stop it. So I just wanted to wrap more wire around it just to see what would happen, even though I kind of predicted that it, that it would slow it down based on the counter electromotive force. But I've got 62 pounds of wire on this here. And it's got about 4 ohms of resistance and uh, quite an impressive magnetic field coming off here. But just, just some food for thought to the guys that uh, are convinced Joe is really onto something. I don't know if he was or he wasn't, but here's something to consider. Why is it after all the years that Joe kept talking about his motor, he never launched anything. I mean, he kept saying he was going to at one point, and he never did. In fact, a friend of mine sent him some money to get one of his motors at one point, and uh, I think he waited for like three or four years. He, my friend had sent him like $4,000, and uh, he finally did get his money back from Mr. Newman, but uh, I don't know, it didn't, didn't leave us with a good taste in his mouth toward what Joe was claiming. The other thing is that why is it Joe never was able to take the batteries out of his motor? If you look at all the different motors he had, they always had batteries. All of them. And I mean, if, if he was really getting all this torque out of it, he should have had a separate motor attached to the shaft and running it on his own energy. If, if the motor did indeed put out, you know, many times more uh, out output uh, than what it, what it went into it. So... I think that's uh, something worth thinking about. The other thing to consider is why is it that all those engineers that were backing Joe 
never reproduced his results um, on their own. You know, you would think that if all these engineers really thought Joe was onto something, why didn't they in their spare time build something along the scale that Joe had done just to maybe prove what Joe was doing? And the other thing about Mr. Newman is that he, uh, I think he started to kind of lose it toward the end. I, I don't know if uh, you guys all got to see the video that I recommended on the uh, info section of my other video. I'll put it in this video too, but Joe had at one point was claiming to be like a messiah figure and making prophecies and whatnot, things that never came true. Anyway, he, he on the other hand, he was an interesting guy. You know, he what's that saying about genius and sanity being a fine line between the two? If, if ever there was a case for such an idea, I think Joe would fit it, you know, because on the one hand, he, he said a lot of things about the... Uh, the way the magnetic field um, operated around a, what did he call it, the gyroscopic particle. He saw a lot of things that made sense. And he, he did have a very inventive mind. In fact, he's the guy that invented the plastic weights, you know, the cement-filled weights. And so, uh, you know, on the one hand, he was a brilliant guy. On the other hand, maybe he had some issues. Um, was he a con man? I, I don't know, perhaps. Um, whatever the case, I think that... Uh, I think I'm going to get a, let any further exploration into this type of motor rest at this point. I mean, I'd love to see somebody else build a bigger one and see what happens, but I don't think I'll be doing it. In fact, uh, really, you know, if I wanted free energy, I'd just buy another solar panel. In fact, I've got a couple already. 100 watts for 125 bucks on eBay. I got a solar panel that puts out 100 watts for 125 bucks. I mean, can you beat that? Also, you've got the possibility of wind generators, hydro generators. Um, there are other sources of alternative energy that don't necessarily have new moving parts in them, like a solar panel. Even a motor like this. This motor would make an awesome generator here. It uh, produces a fairly high voltage at very low RPMs. I think turning it about this speed right here will probably put out 6 volts, get it going just a little faster. It'll easily put out 12 and uh, motors like this, on the other hand, not very efficient. Oh, bad timing on the phone call. Boy, I hate it when that happens. Um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna hang that up and let them call back because I, I hate to end this video this way. Anyway, yeah, I just really um, I think that uh, Joe is an interesting guy, and I really uh, love the experiments I've done with this stuff. In fact, I've learned more about electronics experimenting with these principles than, than I did with anything that I can recall. In fact, uh, this is a great way to learn as far as I'm concerned. You're going to learn about the principles of induction, inductive reactance, the relationship between magnetism and electricity, um, resistance, amperage. I mean, if you want to learn the fundamentals of AC and DC, I think this is a great way to learn just by building a small motor like this. Now, of course, you don't have to build it on this large of a scale to do it, but, uh, you know, I think the hands-on approach, at least for me, that's the way to go. Even to build something small like this, you know, there's your there's your AC generator right there. You've got a coil and a magnet spinning around inside with a north and south pole. Of course, we know it's turning from the magnetic field coming off this, but I'm, I'm a big uh, advocate of learning by hands-on experiments, and... Uh, Anyway, for what it's worth, I just thought I'd conclude my video with some of my thoughts here about the whole thing and where I'm at with it. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of guys thought I was a little nutty for putting something like this together. Um, I realize it violates the laws of thermodynamics, but I'm, I'm one of those guys that wants to see it for myself, you know. I, uh, I just wanted to try it, see what would happen. I didn't have real high hopes that I would produce any free energy because, after all, I... I saw what Mr. Newman had, had done years ago, and it, it always seemed kind of suspicious to me. Um, at the same time, I thought, why not try? If nothing else, I'll make a video about it, and I'll be able to share it with others and maybe help them or save them from uh, you know, spending their money on something that they don't necessarily have to or they won't get any results out of. So with that, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do, I'd Appreciate a thumbs up and please subscribe.
Yeah, I know I could have I could have made a transistor switching commutator here, but really, is it really going to make that much difference? Why do I want to bother, right? I mean, I've went to enough work on this thing. It took me a while to wind all this wire on here. 62 pounds of wire. Total weight of this thing is 87 pounds, so I've got an 87-pound Newman motor. You know, oh, I was going to say, did I talk about the segmented commentator? Yes, I did. Okay, that was, that was good. Yeah, that was the other thing, that back spike. Everybody was so intrigued with the back spike that came off the motor. That was that was interesting. I tried recycling that back spike. I, I was never able to get out any extra energy out that way. In fact, I remember it slowed my motor when I did, when I tried to feed the back spike back into my batteries. Okay, I guess I'll shut this thing down.